Welcome back to Captain of Industry on this, the final episode for Captain of Industry for now in this uh, first release uh, version here. And uh, in this episode, oh, I love the fact that it just passed by the <laughs> the little bridge. Anyway, uh, what we're going to do today, we are going to do two things and, uh, well, kind of maybe three. <laughs> Again, not taking the bridge. Uh, that's funny when you follow these. Uh, what we're going to do is we are obviously going to launch a rocket, so build the rocket facility and all that stuff and uh, get that rocket launch because that's the only thing we're really missing at this point. On top of that, while uh, we're waiting for that to complete, I'll be taking this opportunity to showcase this uh, awesome base and also talk a bit about some of the feedback I have uh, for for the game, That some of the things I like, some of the things I want to see improved in uh, the future, again, skipping the bridge, and, and basically... Uh, do that as a sort of rounding off of this path. Now, uh, if you are enjoying uh, this series, then uh, do not fear. I will uh, definitely return to this. I'm very much enjoying this game. But at uh, this point, this is kind of how I do with the, many of these games is that uh, I leave them for a while, maybe half a year or something, uh, until there is enough new uh, content available. And with that content, then I can come back, do a new series in a new setup and uh, take the th things I've learned and relearn the things I've forgotten. So the first thing we are going to do in uh, this session, and of course, you know the drill. If you are liking these uh, episodes, then uh, consider liking and of course subscribing so you keep up to date with more Captain of Industry when that comes back or all the other cool games that are both on the channel and also upcoming as well. Now, the actual process of building this part is um, considerably super simple. All we need to do is build a... Uh, I think that's fine. We'll move it out here. We have nothing better to put out here. That is... And that's a rocket assembly depot. So this will build rockets. And uh, what we need on top of that is a location where it can come in. And I think that's going to be fine. We don't need to, to go very far. That will be where we actually launch it from. So just here and then... Uh, We'll have a few things come in. I will be unpausing these and then have the trucks come on in from here. This will need to get hydrogen and water. So the water comes in here and it's actually just very, very simple for this part. Uh, what I'm going to do is I am simply going to just take one in here and another one in here. Get that. Uh, let's get it with a bit better pipe. Should be fine. That will get the job done. Whoops. Here. And... All right, then let's do it this way. And that will get the job done over on this side. I will be on pausing this. Can I also Unity build this? Yes, I can. This will be hydrogen here. Build it all the way up. And this will be water. And build it all the way up. There. So now this is uh, being built gradually, slowly. It is uh, getting all the things in and the trucks are super busy. So uh, while this is happening, I think it's a good idea to just have a roam around the base and uh, take a look at some of the things that I want to uh, to provide some feedback on. And the first thing is a general design element that I think is done extremely well in this game, actually better than I think in any other game. So a lot of games of the city builder type will have some kind of hey, you're not playing the game correctly. I'm going to punish you, mechanic. And then there is a step up from basically what I'm I'm saying, like, oh, if you don't have enough um, food, religion, police, firefighters, whatever thing in your city builder, then bad stuff happens. You get penalized. And usually it, it comes to the amount of people are unhappy and therefore less productive and so on and so forth. So that's kind of the normal way. Now, if you, uh, if you just look at it, well, everyone hates a, a penalty and it's really detrimental to do that. Uh, also because sometimes when you get that penalty, it's going to be harder for you to recover as a result of the penalty. And so some games will then do, okay, well, well instead, of, instead of giving you a penalty when demands are not met, we'll give you a reward when demands are met, which ultimately is the same thing. It just feels a little better. Now, the way that it's done here in Captain Industry is absolutely brilliant why well unity is uh, is the answer unity serves two purposes it serves the purpose of making sure that you can 
have all your edicts, your oil, uh, oil mines, all the things out on the map, and you can do some boost. So some of it is pure necessity because you can't do anything without a uranium mine and a quartz mine. So an oil mine, you need those to build your base. So you need some, but the rest of it, like boosts, don't really need that. Plus, again, if you an edicts, you can also just cut some of those edicts out. Uh, for example, you can see. Oh, I actually did show that. Um, here. Uh, it did show that I have three recycling increases. I don't need that, but it's just nice to have because it's free stuff and I like free stuff. And those are the kind of the decisions that you can make when playing it. Maybe you don't really focus so much on Unity or you do as I do and try to focus as much as possible. I haven't done consumer electronics, but well, we could, but that would be, have to be some, some changes here. And because I focus so much on it, then I have the option. I get more options in terms of, hey, get more free stuff from recycling and also as this builds up i have this really really cool additional feature for unity is the instant build and the instant build is such an amazing feature because it doesn't change anything from the perspective of the gameplay now it doesn't give me an advantage by having it it just gives me a convenience so taking something and rewarding the player not the game itself by rewarding the player by saying hey you are playing the game correctly. And because you're playing the game correctly, you will get the convenience of building quick, build thing, building things quickly. And I think that is a super, super cool way. Or just instant deliver. If I have 6.7, I can just click the damn button and it delivers instantly. That is the reward that I as a player get. It wouldn't make any difference whether the trucks would get here or not. It just means that, hey, the game says you're playing it correctly. I'm going to reward you by with a convenience factor. Super cool to give a player convenience as a reward for... Uh, what? Why does it look like there's trash down here? Huh, weird. Um, yeah, why does... The fact that it gets player convenience as a reward for playing the game correctly is super amazing idea. Love it, I absolutely love that. Uh, that is a big thing. So here is another thing that I absolutely love about this game. This is our iron production and we built it long time ago. We started out by building one or two of these and then we just gradually uh, we scaled it up to four. And this is clearly enough for what we have. Uh, then as we move further into late game, I upgrade these to Blast Furnace 2. I started uh, replacing some of it with iron scraps. I did the uh, loose storage in here to powder to sort of add an extra step but these things were sort of incremental things that you could use your same blueprint your same footprint it's the same pretty much the same footprint as we had in the beginning copper as well it's pretty simple as well it's only three it should have been four but uh, for sure that's why i have one of them uh, constantly here but it should have been four i just didn't have the room for it but that uh, is again sort of what uh, what i and what I want to, to show that I really like this, that you're basically having something and then you can go from having the ones that use water to the ones that use acid. Slightly more complicated, but it doesn't do anything to the number of machines. It just makes it a bit more complicated input and then you get a bit more yield outbound. Uh, these can be upgraded to level two, that's going to level two. You can again use the scrap uh, to supplement and you can then use the, uh, the crusher here in front. So again, multiple upgrades to the same build to give it a much higher yield great 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 addition and then in order for you maybe you're like well that's kind of obvious upgrading buildings but let's contrast that to how it works in factorio the gold standard of uh, factory games well the iron and copper in factorio you are always 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 scaling it and you're scaling it because you always need more green circuits and because of that you would need to sort of continually use more time or use more space and use in expand it so fast, uh, yeah, really, really fast in order to keep up with the increasing demand of your base. As you start getting making blue circuits in Factorio, you need an absolutely silly amount of iron and copper to keep up with the green circuits, to keep up with the blue circuits. And that's not how it works here. And it re works really well because you have a limited space on the island. So building something here and then having to build it two times, three times, four times, ten times as big later on in the game is just not going to be that great of an experience and it's one of the weak points i think of uh, factorio is that it's cool to build really big but it's also like i mean it's just more of the same uh, my megabase really illustrates that when you have like 
thousands of, uh, of green circuits per second uh, being produced. Yes, thousands. Uh, then it's, yeah, <clears throat> it, it just becomes like more of the same. While this is expanding it. And instead, what this game does so well is it takes and says, well, you're not really in the later game going to be using as much iron uh, anymore. You're going to be transitioning in the mid game into more steel. Again, this steel plant is sufficient to, for our needs. It, it's borderline, but it's uh, it's getting there. And then it adds up with new kind of uh, features like, hey, here's a silicon uh, process. So you build a silicon process in order to support your, your more advanced builds. And it doesn't use any iron or any copper at all. You build your oil process. I absolutely love this oil design. This is probably my best design. Um, and you build some stuff like medical supplies or the nuclear support here it uses a tiny bit of steel, but a tiny bit of acid, but not much of anything else. So the idea is, or right, let's take something like, yeah, this is the medical supplies and plastic. So you need more products. And this is what you can really see if you do this. There are so many products and the complexity of this game comes from figuring out how to tie these together and build each of them in a separate supply chain, not in scaling up the same few products to, uh, to that. So I think that's a really good idea of how to scale for a larger size. Absolutely amazing. The one thing that I think is a great addition. Hey, we got it ready. Oh, it's actually, it's just coming in here. We're not going to launch it just yet. Uh, and I think, okay, it also needs to be filled up. Well, that's going to be pretty quick because we have all of the hydrogen available. Ah, looks nice. Looks nice. <laughs> auto launch is ready. We're not going to auto launch. Uh, another thing that I think is kind of goes against this principle and is something that I'm, I like the idea, but there's something about the implementation and that's definitely maintenance. Um, maintenance in the early game can be quite strenuous and can take quite a bit of resources as you start building up. And then sort of in the mid game, once you get the steel build here, uh, then it completely becomes irrelevant for a long time and your steel will just easily support it with just two of these builds with the steel input then you're just happy and everything is working uh, wonderfully and then in the late game when you have 130 vehicles you have a lot of the big vehicles as well uh, then your demand for for maintenance one is absolutely skyrocketing i have five of these producing all the time and i'm even running to double maintenance, 25% reduced maintenance. The maintenance is insane here. And that means it goes against what I really, really liked before. Uh, why do we not see maintenance? Is maintenance not a thing here? No, it's not. It has to be a separate tab here. Uh, if we just look exclusively on maintenance one. Maintenance. Why is maintenance two? Maintenance one, there we go, these two. Yeah, so this is the demand, 1.5. It's actually at 2K. It's like really weird how it spikes so hard. Huh. Yeah, well, I'm using 2K uh, if I wasn't using this part. And I can produce, obviously, if I if I could produce this, then this would be uh, 2,000. It's more than 2,000, but it's not. 3,000. It's, it's not even 2,500 this part. And that would require 24. So that's requiring 12. That's right now. This is consuming 60 steel and 60 steel. And then we go up here to our steel plant here. Uh, 24 plus 24 plus 24 plus 24. This is the biggest one. And we're using sort of two and a half of this built. 60 to 70 percent of my entire steel build is just going into maintenance one then add maintenance two and maintenance three on top of it and it just means that basically all of my main all of my steel and all of my copper in the late game is going into maintenance why copper well because copper is used for the electronics and the electronics is the other ingredient here uh, so one what i i think this one goes against what is uh, sort of is, is is what I just said. I really like the fact that you don't need to scale up these things. And then maintenance comes in and goes like, no, actually you do need to scale. And once you build a design like this in terms of steel, it's not easy to expand it because you'd have to move everything else around here and then just add a few more. So it goes up to six. And sure, we can support it with our inbounds here and there. But um, the issue is that all of the piping has to be redone. 
And I think that's the part. So I would love to see that maintenance. It works. It's a good idea. It's uh, it's what really sets this uh, this game apart in terms of sort of having it always being unstable and always having sort of a demand, uh, no matter if what you're doing in the base. And and for for that, I like it. But it it needs some tuning specifically in the end game and maybe even in the early game because in the early game it it can be really daunting first time playing. Uh, but definitely. End game. Uh, I see that. I don't know what you think about it. I I think that late game uh, maintenance one is completely dominant, uh, and it it's just taking too much too much effort to keep up uh, around. Uh, one another thing that I want to sort of provide the feedback as we are coming in back here um, is that variation. When it comes down to it, there are a few ways. Like the variation is, for example, how do you build this? Are you going to use fuel gas? actively in terms of sort of burning at other places and therefore do you want to make a lot of fuel gas or more diesel those kind of, of things are just the priority things that you can you can choose yourself but ultimately there aren't a lot of different options on how to do things uh, satisfactory for example has a lot of different options because of the alternate recipes there are a few different ways to make the same things but i'd like to see more variation so that each base and each playthrough can be different uh, even so that you could look at a map and go like well i don't have a lot of, of of iron available let's try to do use less iron and more something else for our recipes that kind of thing so i'd love to see more uh, uh, more variations when when it comes to designed the last thing that i think that definitely would be a massive investment for um, not a massive investment, but a massive uh, improvement for the game is the ui maybe also user experience but let's uh, let me show like the absolute worst example this is the worst example i can ever come up with first of all the color scheme is square boxes that are gray with gray nuance that can only be an engineer who built that i speaking as an engineer only engineers would think that gray on gray is a great color scheme uh, on top of that we have two tabs within each tab we have multiple tabs that's uh, not good design uh, it's it's kind of one of those things where you need to get people attracted to this game as a content creator when people just happen to find my stream and go like, oh, what game is this? Then you want this this experience to be awesome. And if we look at this part here, this is awesome. This this part, the stuff we're looking at here, this is awesome. This is industrial. This is, uh, you can see really cool buildings and you can see things. And if you see this and you like factory games, you're going to be like, damn, I, I, I this looks cool. But if you see stuff like like this, and and want to go really absurd like this then it's like uh it just has this unpolished feel to it and i think that an overhaul of the entire ui would be a super good investment especially for getting new people in because my initial thought was like yeah it, it feels um it has a feel more like a corporate software than a game with these things Icons, super nice, crisp, simple, but the gray on gray, the very sharp edges, all those things just gives it a bit. Uh, uh, I, I don't know what, the, what you guys think of it. I think that a lot of people will be scared off because of uh, of those kind of things. Um, because the, but this gameplay is absolutely fantastic. Just a bit of polish on that. And uh, I'm sure that's something you can get on a, on a, on a contract basis that uh, you get someone to sort of do some overhauls or even a competition or I don't know something uh, something to do that even if it's not the specialty of the two developers which makes perfect sense the the minds that create such a brilliant logistics games are probably not the same minds that are good at designing a, a good uh, user user interface that's just my thoughts uh, there are many many more sort of small things that I don't really want to get into uh, generally the one small thing I'd like to do is this thing here it looks like a uh, a dozer building from Fraggle Rock it's completely impossible to see where these pipes are going and where they're connecting and having some kind of shading by the different level just smaller shading like these are slightly darker the higher they get or something like that would make make these kind of big designs so much easier to uh, to make and this is some of one of the coolest part of the game is making these big designs and then just building it in with unity when done let's launch a rocket right so anyway um i don't want it to sound like a, it's it's a 
Bad experience. I absolutely love this game and I've been enjoying myself so much. Oh, it took control of the camera. Sweet. Look at that. Look at that. We launched the rocket and we are off of this planet. Now, there's been some in the early alpha. There were like a million different, uh, different research beyond the first rocket launch. And the question on that is, I really don't think that's a, that's a, that's necessary. Like, Launching a rocket is pretty damn uh, impressive from a little island civilization here. So I think that's a really good place to sort of end it. Maybe there's a bit more sort of from perpetual thing. Oh, look at that guy. Look at that guy. I know that guy. I think I know most of them. Um, and thank you for putting my name in the in the credits. So, uh, yeah, I do. Uh, I, I think this is a super amazing game. I think it has also the very perfect length in terms of uh, of coverage. Uh, 25 episodes here on YouTube makes sense. And uh, I don't know how many hours I've been spending on this. Uh, let me just check it while, because uh, that's a pretty good idea. Uh, 250 hours on Steam. And I think that is absolutely good bang for your buck. So my highly recommended also the fact that how polished it was as launch on the first day in an early access that is really good investment so strongest recommendations to to buy this game play this game i've been having an absolute blast with it i'm definitely coming back with it also a, a big sort of shout out to the developers and the new community manager because they've been really communicative and very good at listening to feedback and that's super amazing as well and i think that's something something that makes a lot of sense uh, for a small a small development company like two and a half person right uh two, two people and says hey there's big wolf chris we know that guy i'm sure there's a lot of other people we know i just happened to fall to stumble across that one so uh thank you very much everyone who's been following all the way to the end of uh of, of this series and uh, i've enjoyed it very much i hope you have enjoyed it very much uh, be sure to hit the like button let me know in the comment section below what kind of other feedback things that you think would be uh at cool additions to the game uh, moving forward and uh, i'm sure that the developers are listening following and uh, keeping an eye on on these kind of things thank you all for joining until next time take care and as always stay effective